Okay, uh, it's recording. Uh, so in our publication here, right after the chapter on the family of God, we have uh, the subject on the church being the pillar of truth. Okay, uh, but we will take this up next week. I'm going to skip this chapter and go straight to the next chapter here, which is about the church being an army. So these are all the various facets. We said that you know the church, um, it's it, it it should have various characteristics uh, as described in God's word, and it's really interesting. You know how can you uh, talk about the church being a family on the one hand, and then also talk about the church being an army. An army is so different from the way a family is, but God says that you know these are all the characteristics that he wants in his people in his body and uh, we are, are trying to understand this more from the perspective of the local church as well so the local church as an army is what we are going to consider for our uh, for learning now so the local church as an army we've already when we talked about the mission of the church we said that Jesus said that, you know, uh, I give you the keys of the kingdom and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So uh, we find that the local church has been bestowed with power and influence very similar to what you see uh, a militant force like the army have because if the gates of hell will not prevail against it you know we are talking about uh, a very powerful entity okay so the church of jesus christ it's not a weak entity but it's a powerful entity which can engage the powers of darkness and overthrow the powers of darkness so that is why it's okay to look at the church as the army of god um, and rightly so, we find that uh, Paul encourages the believer to put on the full armor of God. So we are engaged in spiritual battle. No, uh, are we? When do we engage in spiritual battle? It's it's a twenty-four by seven thing, right? Every believer, uh, as long as we're living here on the earth, we are on the mission field. 24 bar 7 and there is an enemy against us 24 bar 7 okay so while we are the family of God we are also the army of God uh, that should know how to overcome the evil one now Jesus has already expressed uh, his intention and given us this mandate of victory and he said that you know the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of Jesus Christ so now it is for us to live this out as God's people uh, and to see the victory against the works of darkness. Now in the writings of Paul, you will find that he uses this kind of uh, you know, war, war or army language quite often. So Philippians 2, he, uh, he says he talks to Ep Epaphroditus and he calls this person a fellow soldier, a fellow soldier along with calling him a brother and fellow worker and other terms so he calls him a fellow soldier while writing to timothy you now he uh, tells timothy that i want you to wage a good warfare so with the implication that in the world we have an enemy okay? and we're constantly we're constantly um, um you know faced by attacks challenges that this enemy hurls at us who is this enemy so we've talked about uh, satan who is the deceiver he's the accuser he's the opposer he's the intruder right he's the adversary he is the father of all lies we've we've seen the description of satan and all the things that he can come up with to attack a believer and uh, the church However, right, we, we just need to be aware of who this enemy is, what his tactics are, and at the same time, our position of authority and our position of victory. Uh, and when we know that, you know, the way Paul wrote to Timothy and asked him to wage a good warfare, we will also be able to 
wage a good warfare okay yes uh, some other uh, terms that paul uses he says fight the good fight of faith you know if um, living as a believer was was a cake walk you know you he wouldn't use terms like this there is an enemy to fight so he is using terminology uh, and, and reminding us that we are in battle fight the good fight of faith uh, again writing to timothy he says endure hardship as a good soldier okay so then it it reminds us that you know we we need to uh, be committed to the cause that god has called us to um, and also lead our lives uh, intentionally with focus you know with with godly goals uh, and be prepared to face anything that may be hurled at us by the enemy okay and while writing to timothy towards the end of his own life in second timothy paul uh, acknowledges and he says i have fought the good fight i have finished the race i have kept the faith okay so um, even paul had this experience of battling it out till the end and uh, who who are we fighting against you know paul is quite clear he says look it's not flesh and blood that we are trying to fight but we are fighting against spiritual forces of wickedness and uh, satan and his powers of darkness they are the enemies so the church uh, has to live with a sense of spiritual militancy a spiritual militancy is you know that that resolve where uh, we are we we are passionate about overcoming the enemy that we are passionate about being victorious over every scheme of the enemy we are passionate about resisting the devil in 1 peter 5 um uh, peter talks about resist be sober be be vigilant you know that's how uh, an army person is or somebody in the defense forces they are constantly on high alert be sober be vigilant okay or uh, have have a very Mm. uh you know be sober simply means that you're in your right mind okay you're not drunk with wine uh, or or uh, you know you're not in a place where you're not able to make decisions but be sober be in your right mind be on high alert be vigilant because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour that talks about uh how proactive the enemy is against the believers and against uh, you know the church of the lord jesus christ so that peter says resist him okay resist him so that is something that we have to learn to do as believers and uh, if believers don't understand this right we will just let the enemy walk all over us and be complaining and saying oh you know this is so sad the devil is doing this to me the devil is doing that to me but a uh, a uh, a uh, uh, believer who has understood what the lord jesus has done on the cross for him or her will walk with a spiritual militancy so every time you observe some kind of an intrusion you will know okay be sober be vigilant resist the devil we will know how to go against the schemes of the evil one right uh, and that's what we are called to do and in living this life uh, you know carefully and alertly we are also reminded by paul he says give no place to the devil so we live our lives in such a way that the enemy has no hold over our lives okay so we have the spiritual uh, armor on we are alert we are also told in second corinthians 2:11 uh, do not be ignorant of the enemy's devices now this is not to say that we have to have an unhealthy um uh, curiosity for what satan does and his schemes are but just an awareness you know do not be ignorant of the devices of the evil one so you understand those things and then you know how to resist it okay and uh, uh, we know how to fight the spiritual battle because uh, all these enemies are spiritual so we wrestle against principalities powers rulers of darkness 
of this age spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places so that's how that that, uh, uh, that is the focus for our spiritual battle now does the enemy want to uh, bring us down you no know, believer or the church as a whole definitely you know, the enemy is trying his best to get maximum damage okay done to the body of christ uh, and one of the ways in which he can accomplish that is by uh, attacking shepherds or leaders in the body of christ why because you know scripture tells us in in um, zechariah 13 and verse 7 that if the enemy can strike a shepherd or cause no some failure in the life of that shepherd and if one shepherd falls all the sheep you know, whom he or she were leading they all get scattered so he is very strategic in that sense how can we get maximum damage done to the body of christ so he he will try to attack in different ways we as believers so we can be prepared uh, and we can um, you know have a guard up and know how to respond or react when certain things happen um, so that that's more like a, a response kind of a preparation that you have in place but even otherwise you know you just shield yourself don't let yourself get into situations where there can be trouble so in this manner we can we can live very very carefully okay so uh, in addition to that uh, when we talk about living with spiritual militancy uh, this chapter here i am on page 73 uh, a section there it also talks about how uh, the great commission has to do with battling spiritually for souls okay so one is to live sober live vigilant to resist the works of the devil to overcome the works of the devil and when it comes to the great commission or winning souls for the kingdom of god the church has to be spiritually militant meaning you go after the powers of darkness you know how to battle against these spiritual forces uh, and you know through our our uh, uh, through our prayers through our worship we've seen this you know how all these things affect the spiritual realm we can take charge you know we can overthrow the powers of darkness and there will be a greater freedom uh, for the gospel to be preached people's hearts will be more open so we will be able to take the gospel far and wide so that's also something the church has to be aware of uh, and use spiritual militancy uh, in order to proclaim the gospel to various people okay uh, now coming to the next section here it talks about training believers in this form of spiritual warfare now obviously uh, for us to live as a soldier we need to be told okay meaning the awareness has to come in first and secondly equipping so training the believer in spiritual warfare is important so we have to engage in these things and as we do that uh, you know believers will be in a position where they can put on the whole armor of god okay and uh, whatever be the wiles of the wicked one right and and it's different uh, at different times in our lives for you know different people the challenges are are, are different right based on um, you know one second sorry i'm told yeah so the, what i'm saying is uh, to be aware of oneself in such a way um, that you're prepared for whatever the enemy hurls at you and that's not just true for an individual but also for a local body okay so we understand the schemes of the devil but we also understand ourselves really well and, and that's the way in which we can overcome okay sorry kennedy i didn't realize you have a question i just thought it got unmuted by mistake so that's why i muted you uh, but yeah i'm reading your question here it says uh, how can a local church call for civil disobedience when no not in the right standing of god's word now that we are in army like in the case of daniel okay a church call for civil disobedience 
uh, okay, uh, I didn't quite get that, uh, Kennedy. Uh, can we take this question up towards the end, if you don't mind? Uh, yes, Kennedy, you're unmuted. Okay, okay, fine. Same, okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so we'll continue then. So, yes, equipping believers, training them for spiritual warfare. So that would mean awareness of the enemy, awareness of oneself, uh, and also helping them grow. You know, we, uh, when Abraham asked that question, I said, okay, we need, to, we need to train, we need to equip. So things like prayer, worship, not everybody will know how to engage. Not everybody will know from the start you know, how to receive answers to prayer or how to engage in spiritual warfare, what, what results can be sought from that. But when we create that atmosphere, when we provide opportunities in the local church to engage in these things, you know, people come, they pray, they learn from what is going on and they realize, oh yeah, you know, the power of prayer is working, the power of worship is working. Okay, this is how we pray. This is how we battle the enemy. So just one small example that uh, I want to share is, you know, in the area where, where uh, I serve, um, several times we've gone out on these prayer walks, prayer walks, and then uh, having times in, in people's homes where we gather together just for a time of worship, just for a time of intercession, uh, knowing that these are the things that, that break right spiritual strongholds in that territory so as uh, believers join us for things like this they are being equipped they understand oh okay fine you know this is how we engage in spiritual warfare corporately to share the gospel in the region now in this manner we can equip them you know, for all other areas okay how to resist the devil okay if this happens then you go by um, spiritual weapons that God is giving you. Use the word of God. It is written. So equipping of a believer. How do you equip a believer to, to move with spiritual authority? These are all ways. I'm giving some examples here. Uh, and we can do that as pastors, as leaders, as mentors. Help believers, help the local church to uh, understand spiritual warfare and use the weapons of warfare. So then they are prepared. They're prepared uh, for... Um, daily life, they're prepared for, you know, uh, whatever God is placing on the heart of the local body. Okay, so let's consider uh, the fact that the church, right, the church is supposed to be um, armed and dangerous. So, uh, you know, uh, Paul again, he talks about the weapons, the weapons of our warfare. Uh, and I just mentioned the word of God as one of the weapons. But there are others listed in, in uh, a scripture for us. We can use the name of Jesus, right? We go against uh, the powers of darkness in the name of Jesus. Now, uh, you would recall in Acts 19, uh, when the name of Jesus is used, Paul uses that name to cast out demons and the sons of Sceva, they also try to do the same thing, but it doesn't work. Okay, uh, but the name of Jesus is a weapon given to the body of Christ. It's given to the believer and we can use the name of Jesus for spiritual warfare. Go against the powers of darkness and we will see uh, God's work being accomplished. We can use the word of God. Jesus used that when he was being tempted by the devil. Uh, the blood of Jesus, right? We overcome by the blood of the lamb. So what does the blood do for us? I am redeemed. Every time you, you affirm what the blood has done, the enemy loses his hold on our life. So we use the blood of Jesus. We, we speak about the uh, completed work of the cross. We understand that we apply it in our lives. Our position in Christ Jesus is also, uh, our understanding of that and application of that is a weapon that we can carry. Prayer and intercession uh, is something we can use in warfare. We can use praise and worship, also repentance and righteousness. So there are all these spiritual weapons that we can use to <coughs> excuse me, destroy the works of darkness uh, and also to uh, bring freedom right, in our own lives uh, and in the lives of the people around us. So in all these ways, 
right? We engage in battle. So obviously, as believers, uh, we may not wake up every day thinking, "Oh, I'm I'm a warrior," or "I'm a um, I am uh, a soldier," or, or you know, I, "I'm in the army." We may not consciously think of it all the time. But what we are saying here is, see, whether we like it or not, you know, we are carrying that authority and. Uh, as and when applicable we can rise up we can use that authority and we can see the power of god being demonstrated through our lives so we are uh, engaged in spiritual warfare and we must train believers to move uh, in spiritual warfare we are anointed for battle you know we've talked about how the anointing of the holy spirit breaks the yoke so what brings freedom it's the 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 power of the spirit the anointing of the holy spirit and we are we are carrying that power as believers so uh, we must remember that you know we we um, uh, we can function through it and we can see god's kingdom established okay uh, okay and the section here talks about how the local church must intentionally go against the gates of hell we uh, touched on this also earlier and we we said that um, you know there are there are many strongholds gates of hell uh, refers to strongholds in the world now these can be strongholds of uh, let's say corruption or they can be strongholds of injustice there can be strongholds of poverty there can be strongholds of uh, mm, what else mm. uh whatever you know some form of biases in the in the society so whatever strongholds we observe you see we are already equipped with the truth of god's word and we are equipped with the anointing of the holy spirit on our lives we are equipped with weapons of warfare you know we are equipped with authority dominion so we are everything that is required to go against the powers of darkness and we've also seen how a lot of these things in the society have their roots in the spiritual so you have uh, demonic powers instigating several things in in our uh, you know in our region or or in our community so as believers we can also intentionally go against whatever god is putting on our hearts you know maybe there is there is a strong hold of suicide over a over a city so how does a believer uh, or a local church engage in this you know you might just want to uh, pray on that subject as a community and say god you know we want to see a breakthrough we we do not want to see people committing suicide we take authority and we go against uh, that spirit of suicide which is working in the lives of people we find it in jesus name we cast it out in jesus name so you're engaging you're engaging in spiritual warfare spiritual battle and you are in a spiritual way going against the gates of hell so what is the target what is the target gate of hell there suicide the spirit of suicide which is operating in the region and the church militantly is going against it you know there's another way of responding which is yeah if something happens then we will react but that is not being militant the gates of hell the church of jesus christ can go against the gates of hell because the gates are stationary remember we said that so the mobile entity is the church and the church will go to the gates and destroy the gates so similarly you know if if it's a it's if it's a matter of addiction if it's a matter of you know some form of crime it could be uh, you know a matter of you know, drug drug abuse whatever has a spiritual root to it as god's people we can engage okay we can see those strongholds breaking getting shattered in the name of jesus and uh, you know that uh, that is a privilege that we have as god's people so we can advance against the gates of hell now this is not to say that you know we don't do things practically you know we can also engage um, in some practical ways of resisting the devil right like uh, what about um, counseling you know at, at the end of the day what's happening you know you're taking the truth of god's word in the most simplified way and you are imparting that into people's lives okay or you're you're 
as you're counseling, you're giving people that compassion of Christ or that understanding, right? They just want to be heard. It's from the character of God. We're releasing that to the people and that's making a difference. So in practical ways, through spiritual warfare, you know, in different ways, we can actually go against the gates of hell. But at the end of the day, you know, the church is engaged in warfare and the church is victorious. So we must never be afraid. You know, God puts something on our hearts and says, okay, I want you to do something about this area. It might be, it might look very daunting. But, you know, we are equipped. We are equipped spiritually to take on a spiritual enemy. And we must not be afraid. Okay? We can engage in spiritual battle. So, uh, yeah, that is something we must understand. Now, talking about the army, uh, we would all agree that the army or the defense forces, um, they are about discipline. Okay? They are about uh, order. They are about ranks. Okay? And in a similar way, uh, when it comes to doing life as a church, and let's break it down and uh, apply it to the local church, so there must be some order. There must be some uh, form of uh, uh, following the rank okay, in the body of Christ. Now, again, when we are saying this, we are not saying, oh, create an hierarchy, a very rigid one, uh, and uh, you know, someone is on top and everyone else is under them. That's, that's again, not the point. Basically, it's order. You know? There are people who are leading, and then there are others who are following. And there's no rebellion or division, strife in the body of Christ. So things like that. So following rank and order. Uh, in the prophecy of Joel, you know, Joel talks about how uh, the people of God, that they... They run like mighty men. They climb the wall like men of war. Everyone marches in formation and they do not break ranks. They do not push one another. Everyone marches in his own column. Though they lunge between the weapons, they are not cut down. Joel 2 uh, verses 7 and 8. So you know this, this is how uh, an army can function effectively. If, if people are all competing for um, you know, the position of the commander and nobody is willing to listen, then how, how will the army take on the enemy? But when there is rank and order, we know, okay, oh, so-and-so is leading. Okay, that's chief. They give the instructions. We follow the instructions, right? There is, there is that discipline and effectiveness in the way things are done. Similarly, uh, even in the local church, if we follow that divine order, there is a blessing in it. Okay, so there's always a blessing in following divine order. Now, again, while we talk about submission, you know, we, we just want to reiterate that our ultimate submission is to the Lord. So we will not, um, we're not advocating, you know, some kind of a uh, control, you know, or dictatorship. Uh, like an army in the local church. So that, that is not the uh, meaning of what is being said, but discipline and divine order. Okay, so ultimately our submission is to the Lord and uh, the way scripture tells us in James 4, we are to submit to God and then when we resist the devil, he will flee from us. Okay. So a little more uh, has been added here about being the local church, being the army of God, one is to carry that military mindset. A military mindset is uh, just to be alert. Okay? Just to be alert. And uh, every time we notice some intrusion, you know, we, we go after it. We are like, okay, you, know, you can't do this. Enemy, you can't do this. We will not you know, take it sitting down. We will fight against you. We know who we are. We are well equipped. We are well trained. And you know you can't do this. So basically, you, you carry that mindset. Now, uh, maybe in our regular life, we just go about you know doing things normally. But as and when you know these attacks come, or you hear of a brother or a sister who's going through something, then you kind of you know you just move into that mindset and you say, okay, devil. I'm not going to leave this. I, I come against you in the name of Jesus. I resist you. And you, you know, engage in 
battle so carry that military mindset which is but an alert mindset then military lifestyle uh, military lifestyle is uh, having focus basically uh, so paul he wrote to timothy in second timothy 2 verses 3 and 4 he said you know uh, endure hardship as a good soldier of jesus christ and no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life okay that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier so what is paul telling timothy paul is telling timothy uh you know you need to know that you are born from above and there is a calling on your life you're living for a mission okay yes life is happening responsibilities everything is there but we are committed to that lifestyle where we are keeping the focus we don't entangle ourselves if right? when you're born from above you're in the world but you'd never become off the world we know how to live military lifestyle live with focus for the kingdom of god okay and we uh, <clears throat> continue to serve god uh, while we discharge all the other required duties here then military discipline uh, this has to do with not giving the devil any foothold so whether it is in the area of our spirit okay maintaining strength of spirit personal strength of the spirit maintaining personal strength of the soul okay uh, or personal strength of the body in every area you know, we maintain that discipline why because we are told that the adversary he is like a roaring lion he is just waiting okay is there an area of weakness of the soul ha huh, let me get in or is there a area of weakness you know in some other way let me get it so when he is so pro- proactive uh every believer must recognize that you know we must we must give absolutely no place for the devil and at the same time maintain that internal strength okay as an individual uh, so that we can always be victorious over the enemy and this is applicable even to the church right everything that i that i said the the local church keeps rank and order the local church maintains a military mindset the local church maintains a military lifestyle and the local church also maintains military discipline okay uh, and the local church as an army can be very strategic so since we're talking about warfare and uh, you know enemy and all that the strategy involved okay because it, we are dealing with uh you know a very intelligent enemy so even the church must be uh very strategic in the way uh, it, it overcomes the evil one okay so another thought that has been added here in this section is um that when the church functions as an army you know we must remember that not in an army or when war is going on some people get injured okay but the army generally never lets go of them but they take care of the injured the wounded uh, and most of the times you know you will have even if there's a prisoner of war somebody has been taken away the army will see how to get that person back so that should also be uh, a part of you know how we function as a team or uh, a community because when you keep saying army army it 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 feels very uh, uh, very hard rigid right where there's no compassion for anybody like everybody just get the job done everybody win the battle that's why you are here that is what you're called for but at the same time we do understand that people are growing people are at different levels of maturity within the local body so just the way in an army the wounded are not left behind you know we must be sensitive and careful to take care of the needs of everyone who is a part of the community okay so this is about a spiritual authority it's about the church being an army it's about uh, taking on uh, the the strongholds of the evil one in the world outside yeah so two 
challenges to be prepared for you know, whenever we talk about uh, spiritual authority and uh, uh, demons uh, satan the intention is to create awareness but people can become demon conscious okay so uh, when that happens we we might have to bring them back on track and say no you know you be more authority conscious you be more dominion conscious yes demons exist but you know we have already been equipped with what we need for victory so that can happen you know, people uh, might lose the focus and also you know sometimes it it's weird people can become spooky spiritual right everything has a demon behind it everything has a spiritual reason behind it but we would need to teach them and say uh, hey it's it's not like that and um, give it the right amount of attention all right then um, yeah engaging incorrectly in spiritual warfare okay so yeah so whichever way people are doing that we would correct that all right so i'm just coming back to the chat section over here uh and uh, rupa says victor's mindset true yes rupa so as an army of god we must have the victor's mindset mm, so i'll just leave this fan open for some comments uh and discussions any any thoughts yeah any uh, questions okay uh the okay prabhakar has a question here okay this is with regard to the previous section he says uh, is it okay that the mentee can be older than the mentor yeah if if the mentee is willing to receive from the mentor that's the most important thing an open heart so if this the mentee is older it's i think it's okay uh, prabhakar yes okay sure sure that's great yes all right um so any any other questions yes rupa sis rupa please go ahead do you have a question ma'am it's not a question i just mm -hmm. wanted to add a small yeah yes yes please go ahead please About go ahead the mentorship i think it is not something very formal it happens very informally and it's a connection between two people where each other respect and it's a a flow of life from one person to the other it's something mm -hmm. not uh, and maybe we can make it uh, uh, formal but it's mostly informal i think it's where the mentee accepts the mentor uh, first he uh, the person to, should accept you then the flow of uh, imparting or uh, guiding will happen god has blessed mm -hmm. me with many mentors i really uh, re uh, cherish those relationships it's very beautiful uh, in taking that from them that's what i wanted to add and one more thing about the being the church the local church being this uh, battle mindset so i just wanted to add we should be always mindful that we are already victors mm -hmm. and we are only standing on the promises of god and claiming the victory which is already ours so with that mindset and with god's strength it is easy to win a battle than thinking that we are doing something and and striving to gain the victory it is all the yeah uh, that's what i learned that just wanted to add ma'am thank you okay sure 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 thank you mrs rupa thank you uh, for sharing uh, yeah and it's very encouraging you know that uh, you have many mentors and it's been a blessing 
back to you. Um, uh, and just coming back to the chat here, uh, Kennedy is uh, reminding us of this question. So yes, Kennedy, we will take this up. Uh, can you please elaborate? Civil disobedience. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Yeah, I'm saying in the case where uh, things are not being taught right, or the government is not giving the right direction, or they are getting the, the truth. So, how would you advise the mass, you know, both believers and non-believers, to 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 resist or to act against what is being propagated? Hmm. See how would you how would you advise believers and unbelievers? That's that is uh, we can answer that and say that from the word of God we will instruct. Okay, but uh, the civil disobedience part I didn't get, Kennedy. This is a case where you are calling for mass action, you know, like in the case of David or case of Daniel, right? Eh? Where they mm -hmm. had to refuse eating, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, they had to mm -hmm. be in strike. Yeah. So how would you, how would a local church organize that in case where there are operations or there are mistreatments for the young ones or for the widows? Mm. Yeah, see, the local church can instruct its own people uh, to do, you know, as the Holy Spirit is leading them to do. But I, I don't, I don't think you know, we we are here to call for like a civil disobedience of any sort. Uh, we can proclaim the truth, and if that causes some uh, movement to take place, then that's a separate thing. It's not like the church is calling people to to go against the government. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sure, Kennedy. Thank you. Uh, you know, uh, I, I'm just reminded of, uh, you know, okay, Christopher has some thoughts here. Okay, Charles says, shed more light on how to care for the wounded. So, uh, Charles, this is just going back to the family concept of, of the uh, body of Christ, where you understand people's weaknesses and you take care of them, right, in their needs. So that's what it means. And uh, it's already 10.50. So quickly, uh, Christopher says civil disobedience also called passive resistance. Okay, I'll go and talk about it. Okay, so I'll just uh, share my thoughts with you on this. Uh, I just wanted to say that I'm reminded of, um, uh, what is that? The Martin Luther um, movement, civil rights movement of, of the US. Uh, it was based on a right principle like you don't judge people on the the way Martin Luther put it you know you don't judge people on the color of their skin but on the content of their character so based on that you know they they just started talking about what is right and then it created the entire you know movement in in the US so the church as such calling people to go against the government no i don't i don't see anything working like that because we are instructed not we in fact we need to honor authority and government okay but when we speak the truth when we preach the truth and it causes a transformation in people's hearts uh, the civil rights movement is an example the movement just took place because they were they were fighting for justice Okay, so uh, I mean that's my understanding, and uh, with that we will stop because we we have run out of time. Uh, maybe we can talk about it later in our in our class. Okay, so thank you everyone. God bless you, uh, and uh, we will meet again uh, next week. So we will just uh, wrap up now. Um, maybe Samuel, Samuel, could you just say a, a word of prayer before we end the call? Sure, Pastor. Yes, thank you. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come to your presence. Uh, we take this time to uh, thank you, uh, remember you, and uh, bless you for everything that you have done and you're doing for us. 
we are grateful that you've chosen us to be a part of your great big family. Uh, we are grateful that you've, you've chosen us, you've given us a calling, uh, you've, you've orchestrated this day for us where we could come together online and learn um, about your house, about the church, about uh, your wish, your desire, your authority, your power that you've given to the church, the local body. Um, we thank you for everything that you're doing for us, God. Uh, we uh, thank you and we bless uh, Pastor Nancy and her ministry. We thank you for her life. Uh, we dedicate her to you. Uh, fill her with your spirit as she leads us, equips us uh, to be uh, your ministers, to be uh, salt and light uh, to the nations. Uh, we thank you for everyone who has been able to attend this call. Uh, attend today's class. Uh, bless each and every family here. Equip us, Lord. Use us for your ministry. This and everything else we ask in the precious name of Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Samuel. And thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Uh, bye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.